uh, uh, let's go forward now you think we will okay but you know I just covered most of this stuff so okay let's let's try to do that so let's see so who we are I told you who we are uh, this is the picture of uh, of the control so if you uh, see here on the screen uh, so uh, on your uh, on your far left is the the control panel one the next one is one uh, using the graphical stuff and the uh, last one is really uh, uh, the when we actually got to the usability using .NET, but then with Qt we uh, we are coming to the to the interface that uh, that is very visually appealing, and that's the whole idea of of uh, this uh, this design. Um, when we started developing, the idea was kind of looking at. Uh, to do is better. So we try to uh, uh, reuse the, the launch time. That was actually a big problem with .NET. It took um, took quite a while to, to launch the experience, and it was pretty clunky. Um, we wanted a modern UI. Uh, we wanted to completely redefine the experience and, and provide the new features. So I think we, we've done quite well of that. It's uh, uh, Maybe this, this one is a... Um, um, a little bit more detail. I'm not sure if I want to go to it, but basically we managed to create uh, our UI interface software in three layers. So the layer, layer of driver that goes down to the graphics card, the layer of services that provides really the link and all the working levels, and the layer of UI where we have our our applications uh, linked to uh, uh, linked to Qt. Uh, the key point with all of this is that. Uh, uh, we actually did a very successful design with Qt. So we did a, a, a very rapid UI creation and uh, uh, with Qt Quick. And uh, it's interesting. We basically have a split in our developer community. Uh, so Qt Quick uh, allows us to get a whole lot of creative people to develop things quite easy. And then we have a number of developers who understand uh, the inner workings. Use use C Sharp and link uh, Qt modules into uh, into uh, our our system, so definitely uh, um, uh, the, the delivery uh, was 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 fantastic. Uh, if I look at the goal, uh, goals, uh, we had a modern UI and the redefined experience and launch time. Uh, we definitely delivered that. So our software is uh, uh, distributed pretty widely. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we have about 100 million user downloads of that software, and uh, uh, the performance increase in terms of uh, the speed of load and everything was kind of four times. And um, when our users rate the software, they usually use that uh, rate that that the UI, uh, and the average user rating is tremendous. This also applies to our drivers as well. So with that, um, I just want to leave that story of what we what we did as a uh, as a group uh, and how we use Qt to to more open a discussion of what's next, because we uh, as the visual company need to find a way to uh, uh, define uh, the new UI for uh, for virtual reality. So let's uh, maybe there will be a uh, question. So I just want to gauge the understanding in the room. How many people have tried the uh, the, the virtual reality, and I mean the real goggles like Oculus Rift or or Vive. Uh, we have a, actually yeah quite a few. We have more than ten people here. How many try the uh, the the Google Cardboard or Samsung uh, Samsung thing? That's the same gang of people. I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay, uh, so. So there, there are, currently there are there are two levels of uh, uh, of kind of VR. There is this uh, everyday VR where you can kind of put your phone in front of your face with a contraption that is like Google Cardboard, and uh, the application basically simulates a kind of view for two eyes and gives you a perception of reality. And while this is um, amazing for first few minutes and possibly uh, extremely, extremely good for uh, for casual applications like maybe uh, real estate agents or something like that. Um, this is not immersive. Uh, the uh, The real immersive UI uh, becomes with uh, with a full set of goggles that uh, take you outside of the world and uh, put you into the uh, put in a complete virtual reality. So major manufacturers today, uh, Oculus Rift and uh, HTC uh, with their Vive. Uh, they're different in uh, uh, in way they, they operate. Uh, Oculus Rift is uh, more uh, static, uh, has a camera uh, on the top of your monitor and monitors your head movements mostly, while uh, the HTC Vive is actually a room 
wide uh, uh, contraption that uh, has a couple of sensors. They understand uh, where you are in uh, in that room and has a couple of controllers that that you can uh, can work with. Um, but both of them uh, provide an amazing immersion. You walk into the virtual world and suddenly in that world you have to navigate so the question is what is going to happen with that navigation uh, I've seen interfaces today uh, and um, they are they are clunky to say the best um, most of the interfaces uh, take the space in front of you and give you like four quadrants in front of you and you take the controller and you have to plug it in one quadrant or another or whatever so that's about it so just imagine uh, how does it feel? Uh, it probably feels it's, uh, I don't know, it's a lot of people are young here, but um, when, when uh, people started using mouse for the first time, uh, a, a lot of them would, would use the mouse and then, you know, you're, they're using it on a table and suddenly they start running off the table space. So because a lot of them, and that was that was many years ago, but they, they would run over to the space. They didn't know that they have to pick up mouse and put it, put it up back again on the table so they didn't have the link between uh, uh, between the the track wheel or uh, in the mouse and uh, and the fact that when you lift it up it doesn't happen anymore the interesting thing in VR it's quite the opposite you actually I mean you, you have the table and then you go off the table and it, the whole thing follows you it's all around so the question is how are we going we are going to design the interface that is going to be much more compelling than what we have today uh, then some interfaces that I've seen that work pretty cool is when, when you have a set of selections uh, and you need to, to pick something, uh, the system asks you to stare at one of these four or five. It's kind of unnatural. You start staring at the laser beam comes out and you pick one of these things. Uh, it's um, interesting, but not good enough. How are you going to use uh, a complicated input like a keyboard? So that's where we come into the uh, potentials of augmented reality. So the interesting area is, um, uh, I'm not sure if um, you've seen the, there are quite a YouTube clips about uh, Microsoft HoloLens presentations. So that's the example of uh, augmented reality. Uh, basically, they have a set of glasses, they, uh, they project everything on the glasses, but the glasses are transparent themselves. And that's the uh, uh, that's the area where you can do something different because you see through your glasses. You can then use your keyboard and you can use your mouse. So in in that uh, augmented reality situation, you would be able to uh, have your windows, as I was saying before, in front of you, but you will be able to use your mouse and point around the world and use the keyboard for the real input. But I'm not sure if uh, that link is natural. And it looks to me that we need to go and find something better than, than what we have today in all of these. There are companies, um, like a small company, Sulon from, from Canada, uh, they are trying to create an augmented reality by introducing uh, cameras on the top of these glasses that do virtual reality. So you're completely enclosed in your virtual reality, but what they do, they actually project the uh, project the, uh, the the video that you see through the cameras on your uh, on your virtual reality. Uh, but then again, the problem is: uh, is it good enough for you to really see the keyboard and go with it? So these are really the questions. And I, I, at this point in time, I don't think I have the answers to that. But definitely, uh, I'm looking for for the answers, and then I'm looking from a point of uh, AMD and uh, and Radeon Group uh, uh, for for the uh, definition of the need of computer. Uh, complexity that we need to provide, or maybe uh, um, um, a pattern recognition complexity that we need to provide to enable these uh, these interfaces. So uh, it's really a plea to move forward with our thinking, to get outside of the two-dimensional screen, to get into the world and define how we are going to do UI for for that kind of tri-dimensional world. So with that, I would really try to open this for questions and may, maybe discussions, because we, we did have a, a little bit of a, a, a mishap with the, with the presentation at the beginning, so we maybe went a little bit long, uh, faster through that. Any comments, suggestions? Do you guys think that I'm I'm right, or you think I'm totally wrong? And it's uh, we have everything. Yeah, that's that's excellent question. So the question is, given the that that in VR now we have the third dimension, and the question is, 
what what do I see? But maybe maybe it's a question for the room. Are we going to use that third dimension, and uh, in in what sense? Uh, because uh, uh, current UIs definitely don't utilize it. You're hundred percent right. Uh, but you you can actually do it. It's uh, uh, with uh, with Oculus Vive. What you could do is, and you, I mean the virtual reality looks like this. You you basically see yourself in the room, and you you have like a set of uh, a set of four or five. Uh, um, kind of options but you can very easily walk through these options or maybe the idea could be you can walk through one of these options and a set of next options shows up to, to, to pick them up so we can definitely create something like that the question is how to create that in a simple way how to uh, uh, create that that uh, QT quick actually can allow us to program that in a simple way because unless we enable engineers to do that in a very simple way it's not going to work it's um, definitely thanks that's that's a very good question questions or ideas because this is really uh, more of a discussion where do we want to go with the in the future uh, rather than uh, I mean if I had the recipe I wouldn't be telling you I would be kind of um, doing it and playing on the stock market Yes. Let's do this because I want to be more. Uh, I'm, I'm not really in, inside this new uh, technology, so I, I don't know the hardware used. It's only with those glasses, or uh, you foreseen to have something you don't have to wear? Because that's the point. Me personally, I don't like the idea to put glasses to have this this 3D uh, virtualization. I don't like it because I'm used to be free. I mean, I don't... But if we, if we have a technology that, I don't know, holographic or something like this, that would be something else. And there I can put some questions, but... <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's an excellent point. So, um so, uh, how technology works today? Um, uh, today there is okay. I'll try to be uh, behind the speakers. Uh, today, uh, the technology works in a way that you have a, a reasonably powerful computer, computer, not not um, uh, not the high and top of the line. Uh, you do need to have a, a, a very good graphics card uh, because that's uh, uh, what's happening in the in the VR today. Right now you're rendering basically two screens at 4K at uh, 90 frames per second. Uh, so uh, the graphics needs to be very powerful and then you have the glasses. So the trick is that not only that you have the glasses, you actually have the wire coming from back of your head going into that computer. So even with the uh, the uh, HTC uh, Vive, uh, you're limited to a small area, and um, if you are by yourself uh, and get immersed into a game, and um, I was uh, over the weekend in some some game killing zombies or something, and that's uh, you get tangled in that wire very quickly. So you're 100% you're right that this is uh, this is uh, uh, troublesome. So there are some contraptions that allow you to hang the wire from the top, so you can kind of walk around freely. There is even a contraption that allows you to be on a platform that kind of moves, so you you kind of don't feel uh, you don't have to move around yourself. But uh, uh, it does feel limiting, definitely. I mean, you uh, uh, um, uh, the whole idea of this immersive VR is to get you to um, uh, to exclude the world around you. And uh, for gaming, that's actually extremely, extremely interesting because now suddenly you are in the game and um, you almost feel that, that that other guy is going to hit you with something and you, you duck. But the... Um, uh, for anything else, p productivity like it, it's actually not the right thing. You're right. And so uh, the the next step is transparent glasses. Uh, so what we call augmented reality. That's uh, that's definitely the next step. Uh, and um, the glass, as we go along, the glasses are going to become lighter and lighter. Uh, I don't see that. Uh, uh, very quickly we are really going to get to, to be in the holographic world um, there are some trials and uh, at the uh, um, IBC in uh, Amsterdam a few months ago a couple of companies were showing the idea of how they can create a holographics present image but that's still ways away but having the transparent glasses lighter transparent glasses is possible but I think the next step just 
getting to that would be to get the wireless VR. The, I think the first step really to feel a little bit more freedom is to put these goggles, but not to be hooked up to, to the system. For that, we need low power, even more powerful graphics. So actually, I'm happy this is all required because that's what my company does, and we do it very well. So, but that's the, that's the point there. Yes? You might have already said this, but when I, I tried the glasses out and all that, and Vertigo, what do you do to get rid of people that get dizzy or get motion sickness and stuff like that to see in the future? Because I know that's a real problem for a lot of people. So the question is, uh, um, uh, what about motion sickness or vertigo or something? So uh, the technology helps with that. Uh, in order, the, the technology tells us that, or, or science tells us, that uh, if you manage to move uh, the images at 90 frames per second, then you are OK. Uh, what happens uh, if uh, your graphics is not catching up properly? What happens is you have your display, and you're looking at something in front of you. You move to the left, and if the image is slow, Lower than than what you perceive, then you start getting motion sickness. So you you are not not getting that at about 90 frames per second, and that's the the measure that uh, that everybody's trying. There is an issue that uh, some people are susceptible to uh, to motion sickness, and they they actually have issue with handling VR glasses. So that's uh, that's that's medical science is going to tell us what we need to do. But the key uh, key focus for for technology is getting uh, um, 4K uh, um, displays per uh, each eye and getting getting them to uh, to 90 frames per second. I think the next in evolution in graphics will actually start looking at at something like 8K um, uh, and and faster uh, faster moments. Current technology is uh, 1K, so HD display and 90 frames per second. So I I know there's going to be some more questions. I apologize. Speaking of medical science, our next session just happens to be replacing the stethoscope with an ultrasound. So if you if you would like to stick around for that, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, if not, we're going to go ahead and um, and let you go ahead and uh, move to the next session. We do have a reception downstairs at the end of uh, at the end of the day today. So um, uh, Andre will be there. I'll be there. If you've got questions, grab one of us, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, your questions answered. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you.